It's been over a decade since Spurs last won a trophy. Well, we're here to change that. So here we are, episode number one of the Spurs career mode series. And honestly, I couldn't be more excited to start this series off because we're back in the Premier League, the most competitive league in the world. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Spurs also feels like a very fresh team to do on this channel because I don't recall doing a career mode with them in quite a while. We've got so many talented players here as well. Harry Kane, Hyungman Son, Gareth Bale, of course, one of the primary reasons I wanted to do this career mode. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. Hopefully, we can end up filling the trophy cabinet for Spurs and it'll be an epic journey, 100%. The goal of this series is to hopefully take Spurs to that very next level and win trophies with them. Let's hope we can achieve that. But if you guys are excited for a brand new career mode series on the channel, my second career mode of FIFA 21, drop a like on the video. You guys smash out 5,000 likes and I'll get you an episode tomorrow guaranteed. So go down there and drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here because there'll be daily FIFA 21 career mode content coming your way. Let's get this series underway. You guys at this point know how things work around here. The first thing we're going to do in this career mode is take a look at the team we've got at our disposal. I reckon this 4-2-3-1 formation has to be the way we play because it fits most of our players. We've got Harry Kane up top leading the line. What a player to have. 89 rated. I swear he's going to be scoring so, so many goals for us. He's just really good in this game in terms of finishing and we'll hopefully make good use of that. Deli Ali in behind. He's one of the players I'm not too convinced with, but Hyungmin Son on that left side, trust me, he is one of the most broken players on FIFA, so we know he's going to be big for us. Gareth Bale on the other side as well, a redemption season for him at Spurs, would be nice to see him perform at a very high level. We've got Hoiberg and Endom Bell in that midfield, straight away I've noticed the midfield feels a bit iffy, you know, we could definitely do with improvements here. Up top, Kane, Son, Bale, it is just unreal. At the back, we've got Reguilon on loan from Real Madrid, a really good left back to have. Davinson Sanchez and Toby Alderweireld at the back. Doherty is our right back, we could easily go with Serge Aurier instead as well. And the captain, Hugo Lloris in goal. I'm not gonna lie, this first 11 Spurs have can compete for the Premier League title. Honestly, because we've got squad depth as well. I mean, look at this, Bergwijn, Lucas Moura, Lo Celso. These are three players that could easily make the first 11, they're that good. Harry Winks, Ahsoka for squad depth, Ben Davies, Joe Hart. This is a very, very good squad. A few signings and I reckon we've got a squad that can challenge for the Premier League title. Yeah, honestly, Aurea, Dyer, Tanganga is a really good talent. Gets in Fernandez's class as well. Eric Lamella. We've got Vinicius as backup for that striker position and a few youngsters as well. This is a very, very capable squad. We're working with about 73 million, which is a very good amount. I'm not going to lie. If you adjust the wage budget, we could easily go up to maybe 90 million or so. So a lot of money to work with. Apart from that, there are a few players I'm okay to sell. That could generate some extra revenue. So keep eyes on that. But... Yeah, this club has put us in a very good spot financially and we've got already a lot of existing quality. So very excited for this project. Before we get into all the transfer stuff and the nitty gritty stuff of Kuremo, take a look at this. We've got ourselves a trophy cabinet, which hopefully we'll be filling up throughout the course of this series. And if you are wondering, yes, press conferences will make their return to the Spurs Kuremo. This is basically where you guys get involved. Drop in your questions down in the comments section below and I'll be answering a few of them every episode. It could be related to the series, football or basically anything. How can we forget about our season objectives? Yep, they're going to be making a return to this first career mode from the first season itself. Basically, six objectives all decided by you guys in the comments section and we'll be trying to complete them throughout the course of the season. For every objective we complete, we get an additional 5 million added onto our transfer budget for next season. So, Keep that in mind, let me know what objectives should we try and complete. This one on your screen, best 9 in the world, is just an example of how things will look, so keep that in mind when you drop in your comments. Okay, let me tell you where I'm looking to make some improvements. I'm really happy with my attack, so not too keen with making any signings there. We've got Bergwijn, Lucas Mora giving us depth as well. But in midfield, this is where things get interesting. You guys know how important the midfield position is, and I think we could really work with a better cam. And that's probably what I'm going to look for. Maybe a world-class scam. That's where we should be putting most of our money. That could be the play. That's a very good option. You know, getting a high-rated camp to, you know, dictate the play and the tempo of our game. That could be the play for us. Also, midfield. 
a high rated midfielder to help us control the game could also be the play. I reckon Ndombele and Hoiberg as good as they are, we could really do with a high rated midfielder. And at the back, Aldo Vidal is aging, Davinson Sanchez is only 81 rated, we could do with another centre back as well. I think, yeah, those are the positions I'm looking to improve the rest. I'm pretty happy with. Okay, guys, I had an absolutely insane idea for this series, and it's Paolo Dybala. Of course, don't worry, I'm not going to make this signing before I read through your comments, because this is a major transfer, and I definitely need your input before making a signing like this. But honestly, how crazy would Paolo Dybala to Spurs be? He'd perfectly fit in that camp position for us. He'd add an immense amount of quality his time with Juventus has been great, but recently there have been a few problems, you know, with him not delivering for, the, for them and being inconsistent. But for us at Spurs, Dybala could be unreal. And honestly, I would love to make this happen. Let me know in the comments section if this is a transfer you guys think we should try and make. It's going to be super expensive. We might need to sell a few players to make this happen, but honestly... I feel it'll be worth it. Now, talking about selling players, I do have quite a few players on the transfer list that I feel are just surplus to our requirements, like Joe Hart, Danny Rose as well, Eric Lamella. As good as he is, we've got way too many right-sided players. Musa Sissoko, Eric Dyer as well. I feel like 79, he's 26. We could do with him uh, gone and, you know, the extra funds. So, yeah, a lot of players I'm looking to offload, even Musa Sissoko. I know how OP he is on the game, but in career mode, I feel like we just need better quality than Musa Sissoko. He's 30, so I'd rather take the cash. That's the plan. We are definitely going to make at least one signing in today's episode, and that's got to be a centre-back in my opinion. And I think I've made my decision on who I want to bring in. It's Ben White. Great potential. He's English as well. Feels like a realistic transfer. He's only 22, and I used him in my Leeds United career mode last year, and one of my favourite centre-backs all year. Signing him to Spurs would be amazing. He'll add a lot of depth and youth to our back line. So you know what? We're going to scout him for now, get to know him more and then make the call. By the way, a lot of people keep asking me, what do I do for training? How do I keep my players fit every game for the most part? This is the schedule rules I use. I do a rest day before matches, a recovery day after matches and intermittent training. Now, it might not be the most effective thing in career mode but for me this really works well on keeping players fit for like the midweek games as well and since we are with Spurs and we've got Europa League we'll need this kind of a schedule. Transfer offer coming in for Ndombele. Of all the players I transfer listed Ndombele wasn't one of them and that's the player I get an offer for. Anyways I'm not keen on selling Ndombele. He's such a versatile player, high potential as well, very balanced stats. He'll offer us a lot in midfield so definitely rejecting the offer. Oh and by the way I'm not doing any preseason tournament this time around we're gonna straight away get into Premier League action in today's episode itself we're gonna be playing West Ham as our first Premier League game of the season now that's more like it we're getting some good offers coming in Crystal Palace want Eric Dyer for 22 million you know what that is a very fair offer so I'm gonna accept it apart from that um RB Leipzig want Gazaniga on a loan nah I'm keen on keeping Gazaniga as my backup uh, goalkeeper so fair enough Aldo Vidal, ooh, that's a big offer, but I think he's got the experience to, you know, lead the back line this season. So for this season, I want to keep Aldo Vidal. Napoli coming in with a 20 million offer for Eric Lamela. For, an, for a 28-year-old, I'm okay with that. So, you know what, we'll accept this. It's great that we're able to clear out a lot of the players I don't want to keep at the club right now because we get an offer for Danny Rose about 11 million. Definitely going to accept that one from Leicester City, I believe. And would you look at that? Already players are being sold. Eric Dyer gone for about 21 million. Eric Lamella gone as well. The two Eric's have departed. And now we've got our final scout report on Ben White. And I think it's time we get into this business and just get this deal done. I want Ben White at Spurs. I know he's only 75 rated, but don't go by that, man. He, he, he's got the potential to definitely exceed that within the first season. I think he's going to be 80 rated if things go properly. So let's get this signing done. Look at that, boys. The transfer negotiation stuff has been fixed. No longer are we seeing those stupid icon jerseys managers in game so that is awesome so for ben white i'm gonna start off with 12 million if we can pull him for that kind of money this is just the bargain we'll have enough money left for the possible paulo dybala signing so 12 million for ben white let's see what's up they want danny rose and 2.7 million this actually works for me you know this actually works for me but we just accepted an offer from leicester city what's gonna happen then you know what, let's quickly try and get this deal done. 11 
million is Danny Rose's worth and we're just paying an additional 2.7 million. We're getting a player, getting rid of a player actually we don't want and that's all it's costing us. This seems like an absolute bargain boys. Let's negotiate with Ben White and get that contract done as well quickly and we'll see what happens whether Danny Rose joins Leicester or of course uh, he joins Brighton. That'll be interesting. Sporadic squad role works absolutely fine for me and let's now see what kind of a contract length we need to offer him. Five years? Definitely. I want him to be at this club for as long as possible and he's willing to accept that as well. No release clause? Absolutely perfect for me and now this is where things get interesting. The wages. He doesn't want much of an increase over his previous wage, which is nice. We'll remove the appearance bonus, submit offer, and I reckon Ben White should accept this. Let's see. And he does. There you go. For 40,000 per week, we've just signed Ben White. And this only costed us 2.7 million and Danny Rose. So this is a fantastic piece of business. So our first signing of the series is complete. Ben White is now a Spurs player. And I think Danny Rose has joined Brighton as well. So I'm glad that deal with Leicester City didn't go through. Ben White, here we go. His stats right now, I know they aren't all that impressive, but trust me, with player development and whatnot, we're gonna make him an unbelievable centre-back. The memories, man, from this guy being so OP for me in my Leeds career mode, yeah, I'm hoping for similar stuff from him in this series. Look at our transfer budget, guys. About 120 million to spend. We can definitely afford Paolo Dybala now. Adjusting the wages, oh my god, we can definitely afford him. In the comment section, man, this is a major transfer and I want your input before I make any stupid decision or whatever. So keep your comments coming in. For the first episode, I think I'm done with my signings. Only Ben White was brought in. But as I said, this is the pilot episode of the series. I want to read through your comments and then make decisions. Our budget is now up to 145 million. I think we sold a few more players. We got the season ticket money as well. And we're looking good for signings in that next episode. For now, though... Focus on the Premier League, starting off with a win that's absolutely vital for me. We're up against West Ham. Before that game, one thing I definitely want to talk about is how I'm going to set up my team tactically. So I spoke about the 4-2-3-1. In terms of tactics, pressure on heavy touch just works for me. And a balanced attacking style with a lot of players making runs into the box. That's what I like to work with. In terms of player roles, we've got Hugo Lloris as our captain, Bale taking free kicks, Kane taking penalties, Bale and Hoiberg taking corners for the club. Player instructions wise, I'm going to keep Kane on stay forward, Deli Ali to get into the box for crosses and Son get in behind, get into the box for crosses so he makes runs inwards if that makes sense. The same for Bale. For our midfield, I've just got Hoiberg get stay back while attacking, the rest is just the same. Our fullbacks to overlap and defence just yeah to stay, this, to stay back while attacking basically. So those are the instructions and basically the tactical setup we've got with our team. It's time for our very first press conference as Spurs boss. Let's get this one underway. Are you ready for your first game? Um, we've put in some hard work. We have. We've signed Ben White. We've tactically set our team up perfectly. I'm ready for this first game. Is there pressure on you to make the Champions League? I mean, that is a must. We've got to qualify for Champions League next season. I know it's a bit of a shift in my career modes, you know, not having Champions League from the first season itself but yeah we've got to of course get Champions League next season no matter what. Can Ben White replace Dyer? I think he can of course in fact yeah Ben White is not as high rated as Eric Dyer but in the future this is one for the future so I'm just gonna say I believe in the land definitely yeah it's it's a signing that is for the future. Now since this is only the first season of the game player morale player sharpness all of that kind of stuff isn't really high for the club and that's why we're not getting many overall boosts. In fact a few players are losing ratings like Hoiberg so we might not see the best performance from our team or the most it's possible but I still think having Harry Kane with a plus one boost, Ali with a plus two should still be really good. This is how I've got my team set up for the season opener. Bale, Son all starting and Dom Belly in that midfield. I'm ready for this man. Let's put in a good performance. Let's start off the season strong. West Ham are a fellow London club, so this is a bit of a derby. Let's get the job done. So here we go, our first game in the Spurs career mode, man. And I'm excited to kick things off. What a beautiful stadium this is, the London Stadium. Um, we're playing West Ham away from home. Starting off the season strong, I'm telling you, man. That is absolutely vital. New signing Ben White, though, isn't part of the squad just yet. We'll give him a chance soon enough. But for now, I've gone for my strongest team. We're here. 
playing West Ham this London derby. Let's start off this series with a win and hopefully a few goals from Gareth Bale, Harry Kane and whatnot. Here goes Ndombele making a driving run from deep. Nice to see. Still Ndombele keeps hold of the ball really well and looks for Gareth Bale now. Can he try and maybe cut inside? That's exactly what he's going to do. Looks for Kane. Kane with space. Harry Kane shoots and a big save from Fabianski. The first attack already looked really, really good from Spurs. If that was Harry Kane's right foot, maybe that would be in the back of the net. But left foot needs a bit of work there. Big save from Fabianski. Now we do have a lot of players that are good in the air in this team. So let's see if we can do some damage. Gareth Bale's header is just wide. I told you, man. From corners, we're going to be dangerous this season. Bale, Kane, um, a lot more players. Even Ali are really good in the air. Of course, the centre-backs as well. So, yeah, that, that one was so close, though. Declan Rice looks for the pass inside from Mikel Antonio, who does me with the drag-back chance for Snodgrass, as he's completely done me there. But a big block coming in from Davinson Sanchez. What are you doing, man? Honestly, what was that? That's not the start we needed in this series, man. How did he not win the challenge there? What a joke, man, honestly. And Snodgrass just slides at home. Like, look at this, guys. Davinson wins the ball there, but then just, just moves away for some reason. What on earth was that? And it's 1-0 West Ham. Harry Kane does well to find Gareth Bale here. It is now Ndombele. I see Reginald making a good run. Here goes Reginald. Maybe a chance for him to go for goal. Oh my god, Sergio Regulo has just scored. Spurs have made it 1-1, an unlikely first goal scorer. You'd expect maybe Heung-Min Son, Bale or one of them to score our first goal in this series. But it is Regular. We moved the ball so well from right to left. And Dombele picking out the pass for Regular, who picked his spot and bang. What a finish from the Spaniard. And there you go, guys. We've made it 1-1. Wow, this was such a struggle because we were really struggling to find spaces for our strikers and attackers to operate. An unlikely goal scorer in regular helps save the day for us. It's 1-1. Let's push on from here. Three points are on the line. A great first goal in this series. Can I just say Ndombele has been so dominant in this one, guys. Like, he is just controlling the midfield at this point. And it's, it's, it's brilliant to watch because... We need a player like him, and I'm glad I didn't accept that early offer that came in from PSG because it was tempting. And look at this, guys. And Dombele, absolutely brilliant, going for goal. But Fabianski saw that one coming. I should have taken the ball forward with him. Oh, problems here for us as Thomas Suchek is making a good run through the mid middle of the park as he looks for a pass for Pablo Fornals, goes for goal. And that is a big let off for us. It came off the post. Oh my god, was that close. Who we just about survived that one. West Ham just moving the ball so well right now. And this is problems for me. Pablo Fornals is such a tricky player. We can't afford to put a challenge in. Because if we do, it'll probably be a penalty. So Davinson was smart there. And we just about get that one away. West Ham are giving us one hell of a fight. And that is what the Premier League is all about. Every game is so, so competitive. Half time, I'm not going to lie. I feel like I need something extra in that midfield. Deli Ali is just not cutting it. So we're going to bring on Steven Bergwijn. And Hyung Min Son will play at Cam. He can play in that position, by the way. So that's how we're going to run things for the second half. And let's hope it's enough to get us the win. Now it's Declan Rice. And that's a good challenge right there from Hoi Berg. I'm telling this again, guys. Our midfield has looked the part in this one. Honestly. And Dombele looking for the pass for Bergwijn. He gets that pass done. Here goes Steven Bergwijn with a big chance. Can he score? Oh, Steven Bergwijn. That is absolutely beautiful. The super sub of dreams. And he does his classic celebration as well. You love to see it, boys. We've taken the lead in this one. 2-1. And it's the super sub, Steven Bergwijn with the goal. And correct me if I'm wrong, it was Ndombele yet again with the through ball. He's had an immense performance through the middle of the park as Steven Bergwijn right foot picks his spot and bang. Let's go boys, we've made it 2-1 against West Ham. We've had to work so hard for it. Let's not give the lead up. Oh, West Ham have found a really good pocket of space with Snodgrass as he looks inside for Declan Rice and we're so lucky that shot goes wide. So close for Declan Rice to get the equaliser. I mean, look at that. The ball just swerved away left. That was immensely close. Ooh, looks for Son. Son has done really well in that cam spot. Just linking up the attack in midfield. And here's Ndombele. Man of the match for me in this one. Maybe along with Regino. What a performance from him. As here we go. Doherty on the attack. Looking for Gareth Bale. Haven't seen much from him in this one. But I do see a run being made by Kane. The cross is there but not good enough. And Ndombele keeps hold of it. Still Ndombele. Somehow then ultimately loses out to Snodgrass. But that cross was spicy from Bale. 
Pablo Fornals, now it is Lanzini. We know how tricky Lanzini can be. It's a chance here for West Ham with Haller on the ball. We got a force in wide, which we've done really well. Good defending right there from us. Still Haller forced to go all the way back. And that's proper good defending. We didn't commit stupidly and we dealt with the danger really well. But the chance is still on for West Ham. If they can conjure up something here late on, it'd be brutal for us because I feel we deserve the win. Lanzini again. Haller. Back to Lanzini. Now it's Snodgrass. We've got to keep players in shape here. It's Haller. Now Suchek. This is so tense, guys. One chance for them and we could be in trouble here. Suchek again. The challenge comes in, but it's so bad. It's bad luck, guys. It is absolute bad luck as the touch goes in the favor of the West Ham attacker. But luckily, Hugo Lloris is there to save the day for us. Oh, my God. This game has been tough because West Ham have had chances, man. It's been a real tight one. Corner at the death. We can't afford to concede from a corner. Get the ball away. And that we do. They might still have a chance. Referee, please blow the whistle. Put me out of my misery here. Just blow the whistle. End the game. Let me take home all three points here. But that might not be the case. Snodgrass on the attack. This is relentless from West Ham. They're trying everything that is available to them. And I'm running circles around Snodgrass. Haller now on the attack. Finally, I win the challenge. But it's another corner. End the game, referee. We're in the 97th minute. What are you doing, man? Get the ball away now. Get the ball away, Hugo Lloris. Collect that. Just, just stay with it calm. Oh, my God. This feels like a World Cup final, man. Like, what on earth was that? 98 minutes on the clock. But ultimately, we get our first win of the season. We had to work so hard for it. Away from home, a 2-1 win. Let's go. Delighted with the first win. It was 100% about the effort. Man, we had to work so hard for this win. If that's going to be the Premier League all season long... My heart rate, man, honestly. A message from Hyungman Son. Hey boss, I know people have been talking about the position you're playing me in. I just wanted to say I'm ready to do whatever is necessary to make us successful. I'm happy to play as an attacking midfielder if that's part of your plan. Okay now. Okay. You can be even better. I'm just going to tell him that. But that's awesome. If Son wants to play Cam, now I can do so without upsetting his morale. So that's awesome. We get a loan offer from for Tanganga. I'm not looking to loan him out. And instead, I just click negotiate. Why am I such an idiot, guys? Anyways, end negotiation straight away. I don't want to loan out Hanganga. I've got big plans for him this season. We start off the season with a win. And that is what's important, man. Honestly, I'm glad that's come through. Next episode, hopefully we can keep things up in the league and keep winning. Southampton, Chelsea, Leeds, Villa, Everton, Liverpool all start off with a win. I think it's time we start issuing some development plans on our players for Tangai and Dombele. I'm going to give him playmaker to get that weak foot up for now. So in 14 weeks, we should have an end on Bele with that four star weak foot. So we're going to work on that at the moment. I am very intrigued to see how long it will take to get Harry Kane up to a four star skill move rating. Because if we do that, if Kane gets a four star skill move rating, he would be unbelievable in game. So we're working on that right now. Harry Kane with a mobile striker development plan in 13 weeks. That should be done, so that's not too bad. I definitely want to put a development plan on our new signing, Ben White. I'm thinking we go with maybe something that boosts his sprint speed and acceleration a lot. Why not the stopper plan? That's what's up. So I've put the stopper plan on Ben White. We'll be putting more development plans on our players as we progress through the season. For now, we'll keep it at that. Next episode, boys, it's going to be a lot about the transfer business. We're going to try and make this happen. Depending on what you guys want, Dybala. Apart from that, any other transfer suggestions, put them down in the comments section below. I'll be going through all your comments and we'll be making a big decision. But now, before we end off the first episode of the Spurs career mode, played of the episode nominees. For me, it's clear. It's between Endombele and Reguilon. Reguilon, the goal scorer. Endombele set up both of the goals. By the way, look at this, guys. If I actually change Endombele to a CM, he gains plus three overalls. We're going to do that with Gareth Bale as well. Look at that, plus four on his rating. So anyways, about player of the episode, between Endombele and Regulon for sure, let me know in the comment section who you think deserves to win the award. But with that, guys, this is where we're wrapping up today's first episode. It was awesome to record. We had a terrific first game against West Ham. We signed Ben White as well. Next episode, we'll be looking to cover some major transfers. But if you guys are enjoying this first career mode already, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here. And well, I'll catch you all next time for the next episode.